Howdy folks, this is Father Dougal 9000 here, and welcome to another episode of Dougal's Game Finish Chronicles, a series where I talk about the video games that I've played and beaten as part of the Game Finish Challenge from the Hardcore Gaming 101 forum. So this is the 10th episode of the series. Wow, that's something. Been doing this a couple months, we're already at episode 10, and we've covered over 25 games to varying degrees within that time span. But hey, don't worry, there'll be plenty to stick around for, such as the games we're about to discuss today, which were originally logged from the 11th to the 16th of March 2021. Dusk Child for the Windows, technically. This is a Metroidvania designed by Sophie Holden for the Pico 8, a fantasy console you can design games for, which is inspired by 8 bit systems and a thing you can play on most computers, even your internet browser. Some time ago, I did get into playing a bunch of Pico 8 games, and I always meant to come back to this one because I really liked it, but I needed to configure it for my controller since it only used keyboard and I can't play platformers on the keyboard. Now, ha 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 ha, I've finally given it a go. And it's a very brief, but pretty cool game with some nice artwork and a subtle sense of atmosphere in its sound design. Although the music I'm using isn't really conveying this, there's nothing except the sounds of your footsteps and the odd noises from mechanisms like doors and strange statues. It does a really neat job of creating this uncanny feeling of the world feeling abandoned or dead. I did find the controls a bit bothersome in that pressing up is the only way you can jump. I couldn't rebind the controls for whatever reason, and that ended up making certain platforming sections more difficult. Though I guess it did also help the overall game feel more tense in a way that complemented it. There isn't terribly much to it, I only beat it in about 25 minutes, but I'd still recommend giving it a look on its style alone. Plus, you know, it's free, so if you like free games, haha, there it is on itch.io for all to check out. The Ultimate Doom for the Xbox 360. I'm naming this game weirdly. The Ultimate Doom is the name given to the 1995 version of the original Doom, which added the fourth episode, Thy Flesh Consumed, and has become the de facto version of the game. You normally just see it being called Doom. I'm only really making this distinction here because while I've beaten the original three episodes of Doom a couple of times, I'd never gotten far into Thy Flesh Consumed before giving up. I wanted to try and address that, especially after having nothing but trouble with getting into games during the week. So I decided to play through all four episodes, hence why I'm referring to it as the Ultimate Doom, specifically. I've played the original Doom many times over the years, and it's one of my favorite games in that particular style where you're simultaneously doing multiple things at once, and everything flows seamlessly into each other. Similar games that take up my headspace are the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater series, the Mega Drive Sonic the Hedgehog games, and the original Spyro the Dragon trilogy on the PlayStation. In this case, you're moving, exploring, dodging, shooting, puzzle solving, and collecting all at once. Or at least doing any three of those activities without breaking a sweat. It's quite good, though I always felt that the level design after the second episode got a bit too complicated. Maybe it's because I decided to just run for the exits as soon as I opened them, or because I was playing on the easiest difficulty setting, but that was considerably less of a problem this time. I got to enjoy the more esoteric levels as memorable looking landscapes with cool gimmicks or weird puzzles that didn't require up to solutions. And there's a nice ebb and flow to how complex or big those stages would get. Long, complicated levels would be followed up by more compact arenas that placed more emphasis on some good old blasting, 
and it made for a varied, spontaneous outing where I never really got bored. It's such a pleasant surprise to go into this game that I've played so much, and yet to get a new sense of appreciation for aspects I previously disliked. I don't know if I'll want to revisit Doom 2 right away, but I hope something similar might happen if I do decide to take the plunge in the future. Hungry Harry 3D for the Windows. Sorta. Hungry Harry 3D is a pretty cool game developed by Palo Blanco Games, where you play as a little monster that goes around licking up things and platforming your way through 3D levels. Aside from the core premise, it's quite different from the original Hungry Harry, which was a 2D platformer with randomly generated levels, but that's not a problem here. The fact that the developer managed to create a fully controllable 3D platformer on as limited a fictional system as the Pico 8, which is meant to be this 8-bit ass system, is incredibly awesome, and it's quite a good game at that too. The aforementioned licking ability can be used in mid-air as both an attack and a slight boost to your jump, which makes it very useful in certain scenarios. There's plenty of hidden presents, which give you loads of berries to keep your hunger meter up, though you never really have to worry about that since you can increase the meter to such an extent it barely matters after the first couple minutes. The level designs are varied and always offering something new to play around with. The one issue I have with it is it's perhaps too ambitious for the system, because the frame rate frequently drops when things become busier, to the point of becoming almost unplayable at times. There aren't any bottomless pits or insta-kill sections, so the worst that'll happen is that you'll fall off and have to climb your way back up to where you just were, but it's still annoying. But despite that, it's still a neat game, and there's even a hard mode, if you want to be super cheeky about it. Plus, it is also a free itch.io game, so if you want to check it out even for just its technical merits, it's there for you to enjoy. And, with that, we've wrapped up the tenth episode of the series. <laughs> I hope that you enjoyed watching as per usual, and that you'll tune in for the next video, which might have a brief format change. Not to celebrate that this was the tenth episode, it just kind of... It might end up falling into that spot, depending on how things go during that old editing process, so we'll see. But either way, thank you so much, and until we meet again, have a wonderful day.